Hey everybody, it's Romania Black. We are on episode six of Ruby Volume Eight, and uh, things aren't looking too good. <laughs> it's pretty ominous. Um, Oscar's getting the crud beat out of him. Penny has been hacked by Watts, and now there's a river of Grim heading straight towards uh, Mantle. So no big deal. It's cool. Uh, in the last episode when Ruby had her transmission out, I was like, man, Salem's just sitting there chilling, giving Tyrion all the head pats and everything seems all right. That's because she was like, you guys, I'm fine. We're all great. <laughs> but man, um, I, ha I don't know if all of you have, I'm sure you know watching this, that Ruby is going to go on a hiatus after episode seven, which will air next week. So... Um, what I'm going to be doing is that we're going to do this episode six, episode seven, and then there's going to be a little something replacing Ruby for a while until it comes back in February. And I'm honestly okay with them taking time off. I know a lot of people have, have caused a scuttlebutt about it on Twitter. Um, but honestly, if it means that they get the animation great and they perfect everything, I'm okay with waiting. I mean, I think, I think as other series like Attack on Titan has proven, um, the fans will wait. And that's the same thing with like Yuri on Ice. The fans will wait. <laughs> if it's going to be quality, we will bide our time and be fine with that. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so I'm okay with that. But um, I'm not okay with what this episode has. Um, it's called Midnight, which I'm like, hmm. Cinder kind of made a oopsie. <laughs> she uh, she probably should not have just did a little girl's trip to to Amity and gotten her butt kicked by Penny. And I it's it's like the walk of shame back to the whale because Cinder's gotten her butt kicked by a uh, Penny. Emerald has just been pretty much useless, even though she has a broken semblance. And Neo got beat up by an elderly woman. <laughs> so. You know, like you do. Um, Ironwood is has put his trust in Watts, which is stupid. And, um, yeah, and he sent the Aesops and Winter to go find Penny, which that should go well if she's been hacked by Watts. And we still have Crow and Robin trapped in the prison with Jacques. Um, but the good news is, is that Ruby's message did at least get out in part to all of Remnant. So hopefully that will be good. And I'm glad that we got scenes of seeing Ilya and Gira, and then especially Vacuo, because we've not been to Vacuo yet, but knowing that Sun and Neptune are just having bro time out in the desert. Um, but yeah, yeah, lots of stuff being set up, and I have a feeling that it, I have a feeling they've intentionally cut off at episode seven, which is the halfway point in the season. They're like, hey guys, here's two episodes to kind of round out this little end of the year season. I hope y'all are ready. And then, um, like, yeah, I saw Eddie Rivas' Twitter, and he had just this shot of James Franco from Spider Man 3 looking back, being like, and I was like, oh, that's not good. When the creators are happy and being all smug about things, it's like, oh, you're, you're ready to make us suffer, right? <laughs> so, with that being said, we are going to jump here into Ruby uh, Volume 8, Episode 6. Um, I hope you all enjoy the reaction. Please feel free to comment down below. And we are going to start this episode uh, here in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And here we go. Oh my gosh. So that statue at the end of Ruby there was kind of weird, unless it was just a model. Um, oh man. So, Midnight. We finally get Cinder backstory. Finally! After, you know, eight volumes. Um, and it explains a lot about her character. Just this series of abuse that she went to through, like going from this, it looked like an orphanage, where she was bullied there, and kind of discarded because to be fair minus the maiden powers cinder semblance is kind of like eh like she just makes things hot she just melts things and makes she can make weapons out of them and melt them um that's about it like it's a pretty weak semblance if she didn't have the maiden powers so i mean it's very it's a very counterable one because she doesn't even really even use it in any of the battles that she's been in in her flashback but she goes from being in this environment where she's constantly bullied and abused to being purchased like a slave from this woman that maybe we're assuming Atlas? Maybe? Um, this, it looks very Atlesian when you start on there, this um, Atlesian kind of uh, hotel that the woman runs with her two heinous children. And she's just a slave and she has this like lightning dust, which makes me think of Atlas too because of the dust. The necklace with the dust on it that shocks her 
and she just has this like um, Pavlovian Pavlovian response of "Without you, I'm nothing," and that's been drilled into her head since she was ten years old. Crazy, and this guy shows up. And you think he's doing a good thing, like a good deed. He's like, hey, I'm going to train you. And when you're old enough, you won't have to stay here anymore. You can go take the hunter's exam and go to an academy and you won't have to stay here and be a slave. And so this guy that has very good intentions, no good deed goes unpunished, um, is too late. Like she, she can't mentally take it that long and she snaps. And she finally just breaks after this constant string of just constant abuse um she just snaps and he was too late and she killed the the two girls and the stepmom and then him oh oh I, she got off a lot easier than i thought she would um cinder using the grim arm kind of like the electroshock just like the stepmother had used like th that was a cool parallel um and then obviously neo and emerald are kind of this warped parallel to the sisters too even though they're not menacing like them um but yeah, she got off a lot easier than I thought she would. But then again, she Salem's in a great mood. <laughs> Salem's in a wonderful mood because everyone's just screwed. <laughs> and Salem's like, I've waited so long for this moment. Your your shenanigans, Cinder, are not going to stop me um, from having this moment. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, not surprising that Mercury wants to totally devote himself to Salem now because Mercury's seeing the writing on the wall. He's like, Cinder, you're not top dog. You're kind of like below the grim hound, so I'm not working for you. Um, Emerald's not gotten the gist yet. Um, Neo doesn't really care. She's probably just like, get me out of here. Um, and then Tyrion's made contact with Watts. Hazel, you're starting to crack a little bit there with Hazel, like questioning things. Um, but, but Oscar and, and Oz... I really liked that we have this parallel a little bit to Cinder and Oscar in that Cinder seems to come from like a rural orphanage like setting out in the middle of nowhere um, where and then Oscar's obviously from the farm family. I, I like this dynamic that Oscar because it's been established Oscar was chosen to be Oz's host because they're like-minded souls and as Oz is pointing out yeah we got some things in common and we need to exploit that. So while neither of them are happy about the idea of this osmosis taking place, I like that they maybe will be working together um, rather than I was afraid that Salem would like try to like pit Oscar against Ozpin and all this. But Oscar has Oz, Ozpin Ozma's thoughts. And so he's like, oh, whatever, I've already seen your flashback. I know what happened. Um, so I like the idea of Ozpin being like, look, let's let's sabotage some things while we're here. Let's take this whale from the inside out, which I'm all for if Oscar, I would be, I know a lot of people are like thinking that Ru Team Ruby's going to do a big dungeon crawl. If Oscar and Ozpin take this whale out from the inside, I'm all for it. I think it's also funny that now Salem is on Atlas with Ironwood and so is Oscar and Ozpin. So I'm wondering if this is going to give the opportunity for Ozpin to talk to Ironwood and obviously Salem is going after Ironwood so <laughs> and they're where the relic is so there's that and the Aesops are trying to find Penny to take back to Atlas which I'm wondering now that's a problem because the Aesops have now witnessed that Salem has infiltrated Atlas so with that being said are they they'd be stupid to take Penny back there they would be stupid to do so they really would. Would Harriet try to do it? Yeah, probably. Um, I'm wondering how Crow and Robin and Watts are going to fit into all this, especially if Tyrion goes to break. But she sent Cinder to go break Watts out instead of Tyrion. I was going to say, if Tyrion showed up to break Watts out, Crow would, like, lose his mind. But the fact that it's Cinder going is interesting. Is interesting indeed. Um, yeah. Yeah, the whale just vomiting up grim goop is disturbing. And the goop just rising up into Atlas is disturbing. Um, Team Ruby's in Atlas. Oh, God. Team Ruby's in Atlas. <laughs> oh, no. It's just dawning on me how all of these storylines are converging. It's just hit me that all of the storylines are coming together. It's just hit me that, oh, crap. Ruby and Team Ruby and Nora are in Atlas. Salem and Cinder are in Atlas. The, our League of Villains are in Atlas for Salem's crew. 
Um, Ozpin and Ozma are in Atlas. Everybody's in Atlas except for the Aesops and Jean and Jean Yang and Rin. They're the only ones outside. Everybody else is in Atlas, which is awesome. <laughs> and we have one more episode till the break, which it, next episode is going to be like all hell has broke loose. Like the Grimmer everywhere in Atlas. There's like, what are they going to do? Like, like it's all chaos. Next episode is going to be nuts. Ugh. And I, I'm kind of all here for it. That was finally some Cinder backstory. Ozpin and Oz and Oscar working together. The the storylines converging. Like I really thought everybody would be separated most of this volume, but it looks like they're all coming together for this next series of episodes. I mean, other than the Aesops and John Yang and Ren, everybody else is all in the same vicinity now. And then the Mer the Huntresses are down in Mantle. Mm. Oh my gosh! But you guys, this episode was crazy. Crazy. I'm curious to your thoughts down below about Cinder. Um, and the, the, there's so many like Cinderella parallels. Um, very, very interesting. And the music was good. This was just, this was just a really good episode. This one, this one is probably one of my favorites so far the volume. I really liked episode four. Um, but this one's right up there too. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, with that being said, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and I'll talk to y'all next week with more Ruby. Bye.